Damn. Go. Today we're doing something a little different. We're gonna go ahead and break down shadow cliffs for you. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the top five best bank fishing spots for rainbow trout at shadow cliffs. We're gonna go ahead and break it down in sections, locations one through five, and not in any order. They're all equally good spots. Depending on the time of the year, depending on the conditions, they're all equally good spots. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing first, when you go to Shadow Cliffs and you're bank fishing, there's a permit booth and it's an electronic permit booth and it's going to allow you to get in at 5 a.m. You're going to have to pay, I believe, in ones. You'll get your permit and you'll be able to fish two hours earlier almost than any of the other anglers that are going to drive in and park in the facility parking lot. So. It opens at 7 a.m. usually for the facility, the recreational parking lot. And uh, sometimes people are already there. A lot of times they're locals that rode their bikes. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. If you're willing to bike it, if you're willing to make a walk, you can get in that park earlier. And the reason people do this is to secure a particular spot, a particular location that time and time again produces not only numbers but quality fish so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started we're gonna break it down and uh, we're gonna start with spot location number one which is probably my favorite I've had a lot of success here caught a lot of big fish and I've caught a lot of fish in general now this spot is to the east of the tube of which they plant the fish in so there's a tube it's all the way through the parking lot, all the way at the end. If you uh, look straight ahead, there's a launch facility, and to the east of that, there's a planting tube. To the east of that, there's a dock, and that dock right there, that dock is an excellent trout fishing spot. Um, I recommend fishing to the left side of the tee. If I can't get on the left side, I'll get in the middle, and if I'm forced to, I'll fish on that right side straight out with short, medium, and long casts are all very productive. Leader length is key. Leader length is the difference between getting bit and not getting bit. Another thing that's important, guys, is as the year gets going and we're into those later months of, uh, say, April or May, you're going to want to cast out as far as you can to get out to that deeper water, especially to avoid some of that growth. There's some weeds and there's a little bit of there's just some snag ups that seem to uh, complicate it as that algae grows. Alright guys, so that about sums up location number one. All around good spot. Excellent rainbow trout fishing location. Alright guys, and let's talk about spot location number two. Spot location number two is a bit shallower than spot location number one. You're going to see these red circles, and these red circles are going to identify the spots of, at which you're going to want to be casting at from those docks and from the bank in general. These are the areas that are the hot spots. These are the areas that you want to target when you're fishing. And on spot location number two, I prefer the middle of the dock. The right of the dock is my next best bet, and I try not to fish the left side, but those middle and right sides, like I said, it's a bit shallower, so that middle and right side um, 
definitely are more productive spots. Keep this in mind when you're fishing spot location number two. guys so let's talk about spot location number three this spot when I'm fishing this spot I prefer to fish to the left side of the tee if I can't get to the left side I prefer the middle the dock is not as large as the other two docks we just talked about it's about half the size and it's made of wood it kind of creaks it's kind of old it's kind of a raggedy old dock compared to the other ones that are made of uh, some type of aluminum some type of uh, steel which is kind of nice. It's more stable. You guys will see that or you probably already have experienced that if you've gone there. So that dock straight out into the left side of the tee, my preferred spots to cast out. And you know, that's a little bit more inconsistent than spot location one and two, but it seems to put a lot of big, there's a lot of big fish get that get taken out of that spot. So I put in the time, I've been rewarded myself. I know a lot of people caught a lot of big rainbow trout out of that spot. That's a good spot to put your time in. So spot location number three, definitely a good spot. Let's go ahead and move on. All right guys, so spot location number four is a little different. It's kind of like an old what's left of what was something. It's kind of hard, some type of structure made of wood. You'll not be able to, maybe it was a dock at one time, maybe it was something else, but um, you'll kind of see some boards and um, the erosion of the bank line will be quite, quite um, bad. Right before you get to the spot location number three, you're gonna notice that. And that's, that's spot location number four. If you find that, that broken down structure of what was it's got these wood pilings you fish straight ahead of that short medium and long casts again um, with long leaders because there's a lot of vegetation and there's a lot of snags and lose a lot of setup so we try to go with two to three foot leaders when we fish there and that's a bit deeper when you're fishing there you're fishing deeper water keep that in mind as well so spot location number four is known for numbers I've heard a lot about it producing numbers. I've experienced myself a lot of numbers there, caught a lot of fish. I just haven't caught a lot of big fish there. So keep that one in mind when you're fishing spot location number four. And we're going to go ahead and move on. Guys, okay, so let's move on to spot location number five. This spot's a little different. Turns on a little bit later in the year as far as March, April, and May, maybe even the first two weeks of June. It's deeper water. It's the deepest water that you can really access from the bank. So it's going to be colder water and cooler water as those months move along. And we're going to go ahead and talk about this spot because we've had some amazing days when it seems like the rest of the lake is dead. This spot can be on. <laughs> All right, guys, so this spot, spot location number five has a lot of quality fish that get caught there. A lot less in quantity, but much more quality fish. Um, you're gonna be around a lot less people, so if you guys don't wanna be around everybody on those docks, it's gonna be packed. You're gonna be rod to rod, reel to reel, sometimes one, two, and three feet apart. Sometimes um, people are snagging over other people's setups and lines and um, things can get a bit frustrating and some people can get a bit irritated. Some people want to avoid that. They want to go to certain locations that are less, less frequent. Um, I would recommend spot location five and three. So keep all that in mind, guys, when you're going to shadow cliffs and you're going to fish for rainbow trout. It's an excellent fishery. I might even go as far to say as it is the best rainbow trout fishery in the East Bay regional area. It has so many plants of rainbow trout throughout the year consistently, year in and year out. This lake gets a lot of attention. All right, guys, and a lot of people would argue that down the street, Lake Del Val, there's also excellent trout fishing, and there is. We're going to probably do a breakdown of that particular lake and 
map and everything like that, show you some hot spots. But the stripers in there, they really got a stronghold. They really took over and they decimate a lot of the trout plants that get put in there. So, so just keep that in mind when you guys are not catching as many rainbow trout as you think you should be considering the amount of trout that are being planted every other week at Lake Del Val. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of East Banglers. This is more or less just an informational. All right, guys, take care.